After a summer break, we're back at you with episode nine of The Download. It's a brand new season. We have a new segment called The Bot, all about search engine optimization and marketing strategy. We're in a brand new location. In our client spotlight, we profile a direct-to-consumer toilet paper brand on a mission to save the world, one wipe at a time. Who gives a crap? All of this and more on The Download. everyone. Welcome to season two of The Download. We are back after a relaxing summer break and as you can see we are in a new location, the Microsoft Lounge. We're super excited to be with you again. I'm Jennifer Solomon Baum alongside my co-host Jeffrey Colon. Woo! What do you think about this place Jeff? Well you know Jennifer I'm looking to rent this place in between us shooting uh, episodes here. Hey, how about that new theme song? Yes, really cool. New theme, new title, new studio, so much new. And I'm not sure you can run this place. However, what are we looking forward for this season, Jeff? Well, we have some bigger guests on the calendar, some fun new segments, and of course, we have the Download Podcast. That's right. Our audio companion begins its first full season. Really stoked about that. You ready to get this rolling? Let's go. Kicking off season two with our insight segment, voiced once again by our colleague, Norman McGill. With Labor Day behind us, it's beginning to look a lot like, yep, holiday planning for marketers. And the 2021 holiday season is going to be very interesting compared to last year. Here are three things to keep in mind when planning your search advertising spend this season. Number one, what's still important? In a word, BOPUS. Actually, that's not a word, it's an acronym for buy online, pick up in store. This is one trend from the pandemic that is clearly here to stay. Search volume for BOPUS terms is through the roof, not five, not 55, 555% higher this year than in 2020. Retail marketers should continue to bridge the gap between the online and in-store experience. Showcase products and local store information to nearby shoppers by automatically highlighting curbside pickup options. Number two, what's changing? In 2020, the following categories exploded with unexpected growth. Toys, games, fitness equipment, hobbies, groceries, and home office supplies. But this year, all that stuff is in decline. What is now in growth mode? You guessed it. All the categories that slumped during quarantine, such as formal wear, dress shoes, beauty products, jewelry, luggage, and party supplies. Like a yo-yo, everything that was up is down again. And everything, well, you know the rest. And number three, what's new? Buy now, pay later solutions like Affirm, Afterpay, and Klarna are soaring in popularity with consumers. Offering this option to shoppers will no doubt increase your conversion rates, especially for big ticket items. And sustainable gifts keep on giving. Searches have increased 37% over the past two years, a figure we think will keep on sustaining. So the weather outside may be delightful still, But it's time to get cracking on your holiday marketing strategy. And to learn more about the changing retail landscape, visit microsoftadvertising.com slash insights. Hey, everybody. I'm Kevin Sell, filling in for John Lee this time. And oh, man, I'm a little out of it today. I had the strangest dream last night. I was walking onto a stage somewhere to give a speech, and I couldn't see the audience. What does it mean? How can you communicate with a group of people when you don't even know who they are? Well, that same question applies in digital marketing. You first have to understand the audience you're targeting, and the Microsoft search and audience networks can be powerful resources toward that goal. Now, when you're giving a speech to an audience, there are a few essential questions you must first ask yourself, beginning with, who are they? Pretty obvious, right? 
Well, the Microsoft Search Network represents 719 million unique PC users, and the Microsoft Audience Network for native advertising represents 290 million people across MSN, Outlook, and Microsoft Edge. That's a huge crowd. And those audiences are composed of people of various ages, education levels, income levels, genders, sexual orientations, and disabilities. The people using Microsoft products and solutions are extremely diverse, and that translates to a quality audience for your search and native campaigns. Another important audience question is, what do you have in common? Probably a lot. A good rule of thumb is to lead with your brand's values. It just might be the same as theirs. Show that your brand has empathy and purpose and cares about people. The Microsoft search and audience networks are a part of your customers' lives, powering the devices, apps, and sites they use every day and meeting them in the moments that matter most. And finally, what do they want? Before you go delivering a message you think your audience needs, maybe first listen and pay attention to what they want. And more and more, your audience wants solutions that help them solve problems and make their lives easier. Well, starting a campaign with the Microsoft Search and Audience Network is super easy. And if you have existing ads running on Google, Facebook, or the Shopify app, you can quickly import them onto our network with a few simple steps. All right, that's it for me. I need a nap. To find out how you can get started with Microsoft Advertising, check out the link below to learn more. Okay, time now for a brand new segment all about search. Yes, and not just for you pros out there. We're going back to the basics of SEO, search engine optimization, for all you newbies. The pandemic has accelerated digital transformation, and many small and medium-sized businesses are considering search marketing for the very first time. So true. Search engines like Bing use what's called web crawlers or spiders to index content from websites all over the internet so that those sites can appear in search engine results. Search experts refer to this technology as the bot, and it's the name of our new segment featuring our colleague Jake Rice. When in need of new products and services, most consumers start with the search. In fact, 93% of online experiences begin with a search engine. So for marketers, organic search is one of the best ways to reach new customers. But showing up in those coveted 10 blue links on the search engine results page isn't as easy as it looks. As a business owner, it helps to know a little about search engine optimization or SEO. SEO is a process to improve the quality of your website, to help it rank, and earn more traffic. If done correctly, SEO can drive up to a 15% conversion rate on your website. Now, there are four factors that help your site earn more traffic. Number one, content. The text, images, and videos on your web page. Number two, technical stuff. The code used to program your site and how quickly your web server delivers it. Number three, reputation. How other websites link to your page. If you have links from high-quality sites within your business niche, the better your reputation will be. And number four, engagement. Search engines note how often your web page gets clicked and how long people stay on your site. That's a lot to unpack, so for now, let's focus on content, starting with text. You always want to write your web content for people searching for information. Helping them answer their questions and solve problems is a big first step. So what about keywords? They're just as important, but be careful not to repeat the same phrase over and over. Loading a page with the same target term is not cool, and it can lead to your site being penalized by major search engines for what's called keyword stuffing. If you do it too much, your site can get permanently banned. Did you know that 50% of search queries contain four or more words? That means choose them carefully. For guidance, put the keywords that best describe your business in your page title, URL, and a headline. These are major signals about your business and what you offer searchers. So next time on The Bot, we'll take a look at some technical tips to make your website fast, as in really fast. Until then, here's wishing you an avalanche of clicks. All right, time now for our client spotlight, Jeff. Who gives a crap? Um, yeah. Actually, here's a shocking stat for you all. 2.4 billion people don't have access to a toilet. That's 40% of the global population. And this means that almost 800 children per day die from diseases caused by poor water and sanitation. 
but one direct-to-consumer toilet paper company is working to make a difference. Who gives a crap is in our client spotlight. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Simon Griffiths, co-founder of Who Gives a Crap. We reckon every trip to the bathroom should be a feel-good experience. Hi there, I'm Jenna Tannenbaum, Head of Growth Marketing at Who Gives a Crap. I love talking crap about toilet paper. Who Gives a Crap's a direct-to-consumer toilet paper company. We make eco-friendly toilet paper, recycled paper, bamboo, and we donate 50% of our profits to sanitation projects all over the world. We were the first D to C toilet paper company that existed. And our audience, as you can imagine, you could think that anyone who uses toilet paper is a who gives a crap customer. As we're growing, we do focus on people that care about the environment, that care about philanthropy, that make donations, that know how to use the internet. If you think about household goods and who buys those household goods, that's exactly the type of person that we hone in on and make sure that we're speaking to them. So when we think about our packaging, we think about it in a couple ways. One, we want to make it really beautiful so that people get really excited about what they're doing and feel good about the purchase that they're making. Also, in the digital world, in digital age, when people get excited about purchases, what do they do? They take a picture of it and they post it on the internet. And so we want to make sure that all of that word of mouth, all of that feel good experience that our customers have can go even further and make it really easy for people to share about who gives a crap in our story and our mission. We actually have a lot of different types of people that buy who gives a crap and for different reasons. It's important to think about the types of audiences in their own unique ways. So we don't just have blanket statements and we really think about what motivates our customers and how we can best speak to them. So if you're interested in the environment, we make sure that you know that actually 27,000 trees every day get, get cut down just make, to make toilet paper. It's better for the environment. That feels good. And if you are interested in impact and how you can make, how you can vote with your dollars on commerce that are doing good things for the world, we let you know that you know, we actually made one of our bigger donations in the history of Who Gives a Crap, and now we have donated almost 8 million US dollars to charity, which is over 10 million Aussie dollars. And we really think that it's important to be authentic and articulate all of those things that go above and beyond just a high quality product that is why people feel so strongly about their toilet paper. Who gives a crap? It's a breakthrough on so many levels. One of the fun questions that we ask all of our new hires and actually all of our customers is, are you a folder or are you a scruncher? It's one of those questions that everyone knows the answer to, but you've probably never said it out loud. So I'd love everyone to think about it and the next person that you see, ask them if they're a folder and scruncher and I guarantee you they will have a strong opinion about that. But unlike other recycled toilet paper, we're all about comfort. So it has a beautiful fluffy texture and low PTR or poke through rate. That feels good. 2020 was definitely an interesting year to be in the toilet paper industry, to say the least. What did you ask? <laughs> we were actually able to see this wave of panic buying happen all over the globe. So March 1st, we saw our sales double overnight that what we typically see. Then March 2nd, we saw 5x growth. And by March 3rd, we were actually trending at 30 times what we would typically see in any day of sales. And we really had to make this decision around, do we just sell out and see what happens and take the opportunity to make as much money as possible? Or do we make sure that we're really doing the right thing for our customers and we're also enabling the most amount of people to get toilet paper that they need. Because we did see a lot of hoarding going on. We saw people buying a year, two years worth of toilet paper. While a trip to the bathroom can be the ultimate feel-good experience for some, for many, it's not. 
The bad stuff ends up in waterways, causing diseases that fill half the hospital beds in the developing world. I love talking about advertising, and I could talk about it all day. And when I think about advertising, I think about it in a few ways. First, it's not just paid advertising that you have to think about. You're really thinking about how your customer interacts with your products and then tells their friends about your products. So first and foremost, you got to have a good product or else it doesn't matter how much you advertise. And we really pride ourselves in making sure that we have the best quality, softest, strongest toilet paper on the market. Secondly, we want to make sure that everything is working as hard as possible. That's why we make our packaging beautiful. People really display it proudly in their bathrooms. And they really share roles with people. We have an incredibly loyal and vocal customer base. And when I think about marketing, and I think about the channels that I want to spend marketing budget in, I think about it in word of mouth adjacent channels. And so what are the channels that really augment and add to that feeling that your friend calls you up, probably doesn't call you up, maybe texts you. They just discovered a really fun brand that is doing amazing things. What kind of channels are that? Those are SEO and SEM, making sure that we're providing amazing content out there when people are just thinking about making a switch to eco-friendly toilet paper. We think about making it really easy for our current customers to refer their friends. We even think about how does influencers and host-read podcast ads play into all of this. You just helped us donate $700,000. <laughs> Thank you. We couldn't have got to this incredible milestone without your support. We're lucky to have loyal customers like you who've helped grow, who gives a crap. Toilet humor is funny. Making Spotify playlists that have to do with bathroom humor, sending customers surprise and delights. We even got all of our employees had little toilet paper earrings. It's as simple as that. We take something that everybody needs and use the proceeds to help people in need. And that feels really good. Wow, you know, Jennifer, I didn't really give a crap going into that segment, and now I do. What yeah. a great story. Yes, yes, amazing company, disruptive brand, uh, really purpose-driven. 50% of their profits go to building toilets in the developing world, amazing. Yeah, and also the other thing, too, is their, na their brand name is optimized yeah. for search. I mean, we don't think about this a lot when we name companies, but when you go to search for them, they own the entire search engine results page, including the ad at the top. Yeah, just the name itself is quite disruptive, and I'm thinking about how to adapt this brand in French. I'm still thinking about this. <laughs> Um, question for you: Are you a folder or a scruncher, Jeff? Yeah, I'm not gonna let. Uh, I'm not gonna give okay. that information up to all the viewers. Well, as much as I'd love to hear about all of our toilet habits, I think we need to wrap the show. Oh, poo. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a wrap for episode nine of the download. Woo! Woo! Thank you so much for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and smash that like button. And listen to the download podcast this time featuring our agency friends from New Engine on the topic of audience marketing. Yeah, we love to hear from you, so keep the comments coming on our YouTube channel and follow us on all the socials. Until next month, stay safe. It's award season. Nominations are now open for our annual Microsoft Advertising Partner Awards and Partner Celebration. Some award categories you definitely want to be recognized for. Rising Star, Client Partnership, Independent Partner, and of course, our Partner of the Year awards. We have also added a few new awards and made the submission process even easier for you. So discover our new awards and follow this link to review all the categories and submit your nominations today. You have until October 20th to submit your entries. Winners will be revealed in our exclusive virtual show in February where we will announce and celebrate the award winners and finalists across the world. Stay tuned for that. And until then, submit your nominations today.
all about search engine marketing opti- uh, hold on, sorry. Location. Oh, I forgot one word. <laughs> on a mission to save the world, one wipe at a time. <laughs> it broke. <laughs>